The views and opinions of Last Frontier Evangelism Radio are not necessarily the views and opinions of Alaska Integrated Media, any of its sister companies or advertisers. I tasted fire, I'm ready to come alive. I can't just shut it up and think that I'm alright. I'm ready now, I'm not waiting for There is no neutrality with God. You cannot ride the fence with God. There's only a yellow stripe in the middle of the road for cowards who want to say, I serve God and try to stay and serve the world at the same time. You can't serve both. That yellow stripe is for cowards. Get out of the middle of the road and choose this day whom you will serve. Choose this day whom you will serve. Will you serve the almighty God? Welcome to the Last Frontier Evangelism Radio with your host, Pastor Dave Grisham, where we take Jesus to the streets and liberals to the woodshed on Hot Talk, KOAN, 95.1 FM and 1080 AM. Now, here's your host, Pastor Dave. Good morning, Alaska. Welcome back to Last Frontier Evangelism Radio, and I am glad to be back on the radio this week. And today we are going to do our year in review. We have a year in review that we do every year, and um, that is, well, I know we've only been on the radio here since October, but our ministry goes all year round. We're doing stuff all the time. So I wanted to give you a year in review so you can kind of get an idea of the experiences that we've had and the places we've been to preach and the things that we have done, not to boast, but to give you an idea of our qualifications. So in case you and your church, if you're getting ready for church today and you want to go talk to your pastor or one of your associate pastors and tell them that you might like to have us come to your church to teach evangelism, we can do that. And I want to want to tell you about our experiences just over the last past year. Remember, you can contact us at lastfrontierevangelism at gmail.com. All right, let's start in January. On New Year's Eve in January, between you know December 2015 and January 1st of 2016, we were preaching the New Year's Eve party at the Sundance Square in Fort Worth, Texas, with one of the most prolific street preachers in the United States. His name is Jesse Morell, and I hope to have him on the radio here one of these days. And uh, Brother Jesse and I and Tracy were preaching, along with a couple of other guys, were preaching at Sundance Square, where we open-air preached, we handed out tracts, and we talked to numerous people about Christ. It was a really good evening of ministry, um, very non-confrontational, but it was, it was very good. And so we started off the year with that. Now, it, later on in January, we did local ministry just around home and so forth. But on January the 11th, we had a, a victory in our ministry that we had been praying for for a long time. In Amarillo, Texas, on January the 11th, they tore down the Cheetahs Strip Club. Now, why was that important to us? Well, it was important to us very simply because in our ministry, when we first began our ministry, we put up a spiritual warfare prayer map of the Amarillo area, and we listed all the strip clubs on it as places to pray about. And the reason we did this is because there were seven strip clubs in Amarillo, Texas. Now, there were only two strip clubs in Lubbock, and Lubbock is a bigger city. There was only four or five strip clubs in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and Albuquerque is a much bigger city. But uh, Albuquerque is even bigger than Anchorage. But Amarillo, Texas had seven strip clubs and they tore this one down, and now to this at this at this point in time, there is only one strip club left, one strip club. We have preached at all these strip clubs, and we have prayed over them that God would destroy them, He would take them down, and He has one by one by one. And a lot of other Christians, their corporate prayers, or they're using the map. They have prayed about this, and God has answered the prayers of many Christians in Amarillo, Texas, and torn down. Cheetah Strip Club, and now the last, the next to the last one is closed just a few weeks back, and there's only one left, and we're praying hard against that one. You betcha. And we did local ministry in January in Amarillo and Borger. In February, we went to Mardi Gras in New Orleans on the Feb- week of February 5th, and we were there for an entire week, and we've done this every year for pretty much the last 10 years. 
and um, we probably will not go this year because we're tied up here in Alaska, but uh, there's plenty of street preachers down there that will be covering for us. Uh, there'll still be a preaching camp. We still have a camp set up there, and that camp will still be in existence, and they will there'll still be preachers that will show up, but I just won't be running it this year. Someone else will. Well, we preached at the Pagan Parade there in uh, in uh, New Orleans during the Mardi Gras week. We preached on Bourbon Street, and we preached on Jackson Square. And we do this every year. And, and Mardi Gras, about a million and a half to two million people show up for this giant party every year. And every year we lead people to Christ. Every year. It, it never fails. There's always some people in there that get led to Christ. And a lot of street preachers show up, and a lot of people come to the Lord at, at uh, Mardi Gras every year, right down there on Bourbon Street, right down in the big middle of the party. People repent of their sins and give their life to Jesus Christ. It's a beautiful thing. It's a miraculous thing. All right, on February the 11th of 2016, uh, I rebuked the city of Dumas, Texas. Dumas is a town of about 14,000 people, about 35 miles north of Amarillo on U.S. Highway 287, or U.S. Highway 87, and uh, their mascot for their high school is the Demons. They're called the Dumas Demons. And so what I did was um, I took a photograph of their... uh, of their water tower. It said Dumas Demons on it, and I put it up on Facebook, and I basically said, why in the world would a town name their mascot after a hell-bound servant of Satan? And why would you want your children to be called demons? That's just wicked and perverse. And, uh, you know, Bible says we're going to be judged for every idle word. And so uh, I think Dumas, Texas, is probably going to get judged for their uh, word of calling their kids demons and demonettes. Well, this caused a huge stir, a huge controversy erupted in the city of Dumas, and uh, I got all kinds of emails, and I got all kinds of flack, and it, it never did end up on the news, but it caused a huge, huge stir in the city of Dumas. It reminded me of when the Apostle Paul got entire cities in an uproar. The city of Dumas got in an uproar because I chose to criticize their mascot, the demons. I told him that was wicked and it was evil. Um, on February the 17th, we preached at the largest homosexual church in all the United States in Dallas, Texas, and that is called the Cathedral of Hope. The Cathedral of Hope. We call it the Cathedral of Hopelessness because there's no hope coming out of that church. There is no, there is no such thing, folks, as a gay Christian. You can't be. It's like that's like saying uh, there's an on-off light bulb. You can be on and off at the same time. You can't do that. There is no such thing as a gay Christian. You're a Christian or you're a homosexual, but you're not both. If you, you can be an ex-homosexual and be a Christian, but you cannot be a homosexual and a Christian at the same time. If you're practicing homosexuality, you are in need of repentance and you need to be saved, and you are not a Christian by any means. On February 26th of 2016, our ministry went to Oklahoma City, where we preached the Muslim Day at the Capitol, and we made a video there that caused quite a stir as well. So you see, we're 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 used to doing that sort of thing. We're used to uh, posting things and putting things up, videos and things that get people kind of riled up. And the reason people got riled up is because uh, at the Muslim Day at the Capitol, the Muslims were going into the Capitol to be honored, and we were there trying to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ to them. Well, there were some lukewarm churches there who obviously don't know what they're doing, and they were trying to blockade the Muslims as they went into the capital so that we could not preach to them. So we started rebuking these lukewarm Christians, telling them they should not be doing that kind of nonsense because they're standing in the way of the will of God, that these people might repent of their sin of idolatry of Islam and give their life to Jesus Christ. And that video had thousands of views. It did not go viral. But it, w- it had thousands upon thousands of views and caused quite a stir, and it did make the news in Oklahoma City. We also preached a Marco Rubio rally, because Marco Rubio, in February of last year, was still in the race for the Republican nomination. Well, of course, Donald Trump won that and won the presidency. Woohoo! So anyway, we, we preached at the Marco Rubio rally, and we, yet a, we led a young man to Christ there, and uh, we also also ran into another young man who had since given his life to Christ after hearing me preach to him in New Orleans at Mardi Gras several years back. So it was a very fruitful 
very fruitful day in Oklahoma City on that day. So that's the music, folks. That's the end of this segment. If you have any comments or questions, contact us at lastfrontierevangelism at gmail.com. And hold on after the break, and we'll tell you what we did the rest of the year. Good morning, Alaska. We are back after the break. This is Pastor Dave Grisham with Last Frontier Evangelism Radio. And today we are doing our year in review for our ministry. And we are enc- by doing this year in review, we want to encourage Christians to be active. You know, my wife and I, we are not millionaires. We don't have a lot of money, but we spend our extra money on preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ all over the place, wherever we can go. All right, so we told you in the last segment about January and February. Now we're up to March. And in March of 2016, our ministry uh, went down to South Padre Island to preach to the, um, to the college kids. There's about sixty to 80,000 that show up down there. On the way down, we preached at the Alamo in San Antonio. I also preached a small church there in Port Isabel, which I do every year. We have our camp set up at a small church there in Port Isabel, Texas. And... Um, we preached to the gospel to uh, we what we do there is we go to the beach during the day when the kids are partying at the beach and then we we leave and we take a break and we eat dinner and then we go back out at night to the bars where they they go to the bars at night and they party at the bars and we preach to them at the bars and then at the next day we do exactly the same thing over and over again and we do this for an entire week usually it's a weekend before the entire week of spring break and the following weekend so we do this for about eight or nine days and uh, this year we saved a young man's life who was uh, passed out in the bed of a pickup. It wasn't even his pickup. He didn't even know where he was. They took him by ambulance uh, to, uh, uh, to the hospital because he was so intoxicated and he was dehydrated. And he passed out in the back of this truck. And they said if we'd left him there, it might have been really serious. It might have cost him his life. Uh, that's what the medics said. Uh, we have Our ministry has rescued people pulled them out of the water before actually physically rescued people and saved their physical lives of pulling them out of the water every year kids die at spring break in south padre island this year there were eight eight in 2016 that went home in body bags one young woman fell off a seven-story balcony when she got drunk and fell out of the balcony of her hotel room uh a, a couple more were found dead on the beach from uh from alcohol poisoning one was found dead in his his condo from alcohol poisoning one of them died in a uh, a van crash when he crashed his van into a chicken restaurant. Well, he was going in the middle of the night, going 90 miles an hour. And it happens all the time. They fall out of the backs of trucks. They get run over by drunks driving. They're drunk and crossing the street, and they get run over by sober people. They just, they just, the drunks get killed every year. This past year, there were eight that went home in body bags. And we led some people to Christ. Uh, we really did. Happens every year. In March, we also preached at West Texas A&M University in Canyon, Texas. Uh, we did that one day and caused quite a stir on campus. They're not used to seeing street preachers there. In April, this was late April, right at the end of April, our ministry went to the largest Indian powwow in the United States, which is in Albuquerque, New Mexico. It's called the Gathering of Nations. And we were there for the weekend. We stayed at a small church there in Albuquerque, established a camp there, and we took a team of six or eight people, and we preached the gospel of Jesus Christ to the Native Americans, the Indians, as they were going in and out of this large gathering of nations where they went there to dance and to practice their Native religious rituals and all of that, and we were there trying to preach to them about Jesus Christ. And it was uh, it was the first time anyone had ever preached that event, and that was recommended to me by another street preacher who drives a truck, and he called me and said, hey, you know, I've seen this event go on in Albuquerque, and I've always wanted to preach it, but I, I haven't had the opportunity because I've been working. Uh, I'm going to put you on this. And so we I formed up a team, and we went there, and we preached to them, and it was a really good preach. Now, in the month of May of 2016, um, we moved to Alaska. That's the month we moved to Alaska. And we drove the Alcan. We drove up from Texas, which was about... 3,800 miles, 3,900 miles, something like that, uh, a long distance. And we did a little bit of ministry along the way. I mean, we handed out some tracks. We, you know, we left some tracks. And we do this pretty much everywhere we go. If we travel, we leave tracks. Where If we go to airports, we leave tracks in airports. We don't do direct handouts. We do 
indirect handouts. And if you uh, if you want to call us or contact us at Last Frontier Evangelism at gmail dot com, if your church wants us to teach evangelism, you want us to teach your church evangelism, uh, we can show you uh, ten thousand ways to hand out tracks. We can show you tons and tons and tons of ways to hand out tracks, both directly and indirectly. We can show you how to be creative with that and all of that. And so we handed out tracks a little bit along the way. And we did some one-on-one witnessing in Edmonton, Canada, to a couple whose home may have burned down in that big wildfire up there. And they were a couple of atheists, and we witnessed to them actually outside of a fast food restaurant in Edmonton, Canada. And then we arrived here in Alaska on May the 16th and uh, started living here. And then we traveled. At that point, we took a week, and we went to Hawaii to preach the gospel in Hawaii. We flew to Honolulu, Hawaii, and preached on the beach and handed out gospel tracts on the streets. And we also preached in Kailua, a small town on the other side of Oahu, just opposite from from Honolulu. We we stayed on right on Waikiki Beach. And uh, hey, you know, even street preachers get a vacation, right? They but we always incorporate ministry in with our vacation. If we go someplace to have fun, the most fun we can have is preaching the gospel. And that's what we do. So we we went there, went to Hawaii. It was the first time we've ever preached there. And we had a good time and we preached the gospel. And uh, while we've been in Alaska, we've done a wide variety of ministry. We've done some homeless ministry. We've preached at lots of different bars. Uh, You're going to if you are out and about around uh, Anchorage, uh, mostly in the summer, uh, even though it's in the wintertime, too, we do this in the winter somewhat. Uh, you're going to see us out at the bars and the nightclubs preaching the gospel. And we've been to places like the Polar Bar. We've been to the Great Alaska Bush Company. We've preached at Crazy Horse Strip Club. We've preached at Darwin's Theory, Avenue Bar, Panhandle Bar, Mad Myrna's, which is a gay bar. We've preached, uh, we've preached at that one. The Crossroads Bar, and we've preached at Coots a couple of times, which is a really large uh, nightclub in Anchorage. And so we've, we've preached these bars all over the place. We've witnessed to tons of people. We've handed out lots of tracks. Um, we have a guy in Dallas that produces a lot of tracks for us. And we just got through producing a bunch of tracks for the Iditarod. We've got a team coming up. We're going to have a small team that is going to be preaching at the Iditarod. <coughs> Excuse me. We're going to be preaching at the Iditarod uh, early March. We'll also be preaching at the uh, Fur Rondi Festival, which goes on right there at the end of February and on into the beginning of March leading up to uh, Iditarod. So we're going to be preaching that. Uh, in June, we preached at the Summer Solstice Celebration downtown, and um, that's where we met a small church, uh, met a small uh, Baptist church there, and they were out preaching also. And so we ran into them, and so we've kind of teamed up with them a little bit on some things. And then we preached the Alaska Gay Pride in June. Now, I believe this was probably the first time that street preachers have ever showed up at the Alaska Gay Pride. Um, It was certainly the first time, as far as the people that were there were concerned, they had never seen street preachers preaching at their Gay Pride before, and it caused quite a stir. Made the newspaper here, and they did not have anything nice to say about us in the newspaper. Um but the it was a very fruitful day. We we did get assaulted, unfortunately. They took our cross away from us and threw it on the ground and started stomping on it and shoved us around a little bit. And we kind of had to kind of push them off of us to get them away from us. And so, uh, but that caused a little bit of a little bit of a tussle there. But other than that, we did get to get the word out and we preached the gospel to them. And it was a very successful day, very successful day. And we will do that again. So if you're listening to the sound of my voice on the radio this morning and you were at the Gay Pride, uh, count on us being back because we intend to show back up again and preach the gospel there again. Now, in July, uh, we preached the Republican and the Democrat National Conventions. The Republican National Convention was in Cleveland, Ohio, and the Democrat National Convention was in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Uh, we were there for about five days for each event. Um, I took two weeks to go and do this, and uh, my wife did not go on this preach, but I did. And we I set up camps in both uh, Cleveland, Ohio, and Philadelphia. Uh, and we had two dozen or so, 25 to 30 street preachers at each event. We had quite a few show up for this. It was a, We thought it was going to be a big historical event, and it was. It was historical. 
And during those times, we got to preach to anarchists, we preached to communists, we preached to socialists, we preached to Democrats, we preached to Republicans, we preached to just all kinds of people. We preached to all kinds of people at both of those events, and um, it was uh, it was a really good preach, it really was. We led some people to Christ, and we made a national statement and quite made the news, made the news all over the United States that we were there. Our signs, our banners, our preaching was heard all over the United States during that time frame. Don't go away, folks. This is Pastor Dave Grisham with Last Frontier Evangelism Radio, and I will be right back after this break with our year in review. Good morning, Alaska. This is Pastor Dave Grisham with Last Frontier Evangelism Radio on KOAN Hot Talk Radio 95.1 FM and 1080 AM. And we are back after the break, and we are going over our yearly review. This is our end-of-year review for our ministry, telling you exactly what we've done and where we've been and all the places we preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so we left off in July, so we are still in the month of July because that was a very busy month. As I said before in the last segment, we preached the Republican and Democrat National Convention, the Republican Convention in Cleveland, Ohio, and the Democrat National Convention in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. In between those two things, we preached the Gay Pride Parade and the festival at Fort Wayne, Indiana, and that made the local news for sure. They were really upset by us doing that. Um, We preached an R&B festival in Cincinnati, Ohio, and a Cincinnati Reds baseball game. We stood out in front of it and preached the gospel there, too. And then we went on to the Democrat National Convention in Pennsylvania, in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And that was all over all over uh, the national news. And there was actually a viral video that came out of that. There was uh, uh, what we called Godzilla Woman, uh, where she was dancing in front of us like half naked and that. That video had like 300, 400,000 views. It went, a viral video came out of that. Um, fortunately, it wasn't about me because that, that was just a horrible video. Um, we, uh, we made a video of the fake dancing hippie Jesus there, and we also preached at the subway station there also. We, we were all over Philadelphia, and we were all over Cleveland, Ohio, preaching in various places. Uh, we were preaching when the communists were burning an American flag, and the guy caught himself on fire we were preaching there for that event that made national news, and, and there was just a lot of things going on. It was a very, very busy month. The gospel was preached to a lot of people who had not heard the gospel before or not really being preached to, a lot of people that were not going to church. And that's our goal, is to reach out to people that are not going to walk in your church. You're not going to find a lot of socialists and communists and anarchists and all these other kinds of radical people, they're not really going to show up in your church. They might protest your church outside, but they're really not going to go inside and hear the gospel. But they need to hear it. They need to hear it. All right. In um, August and September, we did local ministry, and we made a, we made a lot of videos for our um, Last Frontier Evangelism. You can find those on YouTube. We made quite a few videos locally at some cemeteries and um, just in at diff- different places around Anchorage area and Seward and Homer and various places like that. Um, we uh, made a Facebook page for Last Frontier Evangelism. That's when we did the Facebook page. We started that. And we preached in Seward and Whittier, Palmer, Wasilla, Homer, and Denali National Park and Hatcher's Pass. Those were some of the places where we made the videos and some of the places where we also preached the gospel. And so we've, we've traveled around the state of Alaska during August and September. We took advantage of the warm weather and pretty much traveled all over the place. And um, if you'll go to YouTube and watch those videos, you'll get an understanding of our ministry a little bit better. You'll get an understanding a little bit more of, of uh, how we think and, um, and how we teach out of the Bible. And like I said, if you are getting ready for church today or you're on your way to church and you want your church to be doing more evangelism, we have the experience to teach folks how to do evangelism. And it doesn't necessarily have to be the way we do it. That's not that's not it at all. We we can teach how to do it, and then you can go out and do it the way God calls you, or the way God calls your team. If you want to start a street ministry team, and um, you know, you know, if you were to go to a nursing home and preach to elderly people at a nursing home, I promise you, you might lead some people to Christ who are just about to die, 
You might actually, you know, the thief on the cross that gave his life to Christ right before he died, there might be a thief on the cross there at a nursing home. Uh, you could do homeless ministry. You can do uh, you can do hospital ministry. There's all kinds of street ministry. We call street ministry just anything that is outside of the four walls of the church. When you're outside in the culture, when you're outside on the streets, preach the gospel everywhere you go. Hand out tracts everywhere you go. Just be a witness for Christ no matter where God takes you. All right. Starting in October, we started Last Frontier Evangelism Radio. That's where we began this radio program was in October. And we did a a lot more uh, local ministry making videos and the building the foundation for the future. And we taught one evangelism class in October. Um, we, we taught it at our local church. And um, hopefully they will take those lessons and they will use them in their everyday life. You know, you don't have to necessarily go out in a group necessarily and go out onto the streets and all hang together and be preaching in front of some bar or whatever. Uh, you can just learn how to do evangelism and then just apply it to your everyday life when you're at Walmart. And, you know, how do you how do you talk to strangers? You know, every every friend you've ever had started off as a stranger. There's no reason for us as Christians not to be talking to strangers, not to be talking to people who uh, who have given who uh, need to be given their lives to the Lord. Everybody needs the gospel of Jesus Christ. Everybody needs to be saved. And so there's no reason for us as Christians to not reach out to the lost. And I, I mean that on a daily basis. You don't you don't have to travel to the Democrat National Convention or the Republican National Convention. You don't have to travel to the largest gathering of nations, the Indian powwow in Albuquerque, New Mexico. You don't have to go to all those places to preach the gospel. You can just preach the gospel to your friends and your family and the people you meet in your everyday life on the streets. That is street ministry. That is street ministry as well. Not everybody's called to do it the way we do it. We just we just want to tell people how we do things and what we do as an encouragement to other Christians that if, look, if we can travel all these different places and do all these different things, then certainly you can travel across the street, talk to your neighbor about Jesus Christ. Certainly you can talk to the person next door. You can talk to the person in front of you in line to, at, the, at the grocery store, you know, at cars or at Fred Meyers or at Walmart. If you're sitting there waiting out, waiting to check out, you can talk to the person in front of you. You can wear a Christian T-shirt that might provoke some people to a, a conversation about God. As Christians, we're supposed to be changing the conversation away from the ways of the world and towards the Word. Now, how are we going to do that if we keep silent? I don't, you know, we shouldn't be camouflaged. Christians should not be camouflaged in the culture. They should not be walking around totally unseen and unknown in the culture. The culture should be able to look at Christians and see a, a very a vast difference between them and the other people in the world. They should be able, the Christians should look different, Christians should talk different, Christians should act different, and Christians should be aggressive in leading people to Christ. Because you know, if some guy is having a heart attack in your driveway, how aggressive are you going to be towards um, trying to get his heart started? You going to do CPR pretty aggressive on your neighbor? You going to try to save his life aggressively? Nothing wrong with being aggressive with the gospel, folks. Nothing wrong with it at all. We're not talking about doing things like the Muslims do and blowing people up and shooting people and chopping off heads. We're not talking about that. We're just talking about reaching out to people and talking to them about the Lord, changing the conversation. You know, wouldn't you like to hear less people talking about football and more people talking about Jesus? Wouldn't you like to hear less people talking about how much they had to drink the night before and hear them talking more about how they prayed the night before? Wouldn't you like to see that? Wouldn't you like to hear those things? Wouldn't you like to change the conversation in Alaska? Well, you can do that. You can do that one heart at a time. One heart at a time. All right, in the month of November, we did a, we did a local ministry here. We, uh, uh, and also in, in October and November, we, all, we went, to, um, went to the football games. You know, we, we, we handed out about 1,000 tracks at the state championship football game here in Anchorage. We went to a game before that and handed out tracks there also. And that's really, really, that's, that's a lot of what we do. I mean, not everything we do is confrontational. Some things are. You know, we make videos that make people upset. We make posts on uh, Facebook that make people upset, which I'm going to talk about here in a minute in this last, this last segment. I'm going to talk about December. I'm saving that for the last segment. And uh, we do things that make people upset. Well, that, that's par for the course. 
people are going to get upset. When you look at, you know, there's a reason they threw first century Christians to the lions. And it's not because they were running around saying, Jesus loves you, Jesus loves you. That's, that's not why they were throwing them to the lions. They were throwing him to the lions because they were saying you need to repent of your sins and give your life to Jesus Christ because there's the wrath of God awaits the sons of disobedience. You know, they were telling people that the wrath of God abides on the sons of disobedience. And the only way to escape that wrath is through the mercy of God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. That's the gospel. That's the gospel message. And it's always been offensive. So expect to offend people. But you know what? The rewards and the glory so much outweigh the offense then in the end, it's going to be more than worth it. Anyway, this is Pastor Dave Grisham with Last Frontier Evangelism Radio. You can contact us at lastfrontierevangelism at gmail.com. And I will be right back after the break to talk about the last month of our ministry for the year in review, December. Hang on, folks. Be right back. Alaska. This is Pastor Dave Grisham with Last Frontier Evangelism Radio on KOAN Hot Talk Radio, 95.1 FM and 1080 AM. And today we are taking Jesus to the streets and liberals to the woodshed. Well, actually, we're not taking anybody to the woodshed today. Uh, we're actually just talking about taking Jesus to the streets. And we've been talking about that the last three segments, about our year in review for our ministry and the places we've been, the things that we have done. We've preached the gospel of Jesus Christ in Texas, we've preached the gospel in airports. Uh, I mean, I've been to, I've preached in Denver Airport, in Los Angeles, and Seattle, and Houston, and Chicago. I've done all those airports this year. And then also we've preached in uh, Philadelphia, and Cleveland, and Fort Wayne, Indiana, and Cincinnati, Ohio, and about four or five different cities around Amarillo, Texas. And and then we preached in uh, San Antonio, and we, oh, I forgot, we preached in Austin on the way back. We preached the South by Southwest Music Festival on the way back in Austin. That was uh, back in March during spring break. And we've, we've preached all over Texas and now all over Alaska, Hawaii, and um, we've just been all different kinds of places. And, and we do this because, because we love the Lord. You know, the Lord went to the cross for us. So it's not, it's not that difficult to want to go you know, to your neighbor across the street or to your neighbor across the country. And that's not really too much to ask of God from us. You know, it's really not. It's not too much to ask that if he spent the last ounce of his devotion, his last ounce of strength upon that cross, is it is it really too much to ask for me to spend my last extra dime on preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ? If I'm going to spend an eternity in heaven, why am I spending all my money and spending all my time and gathering up all the things in this world as though this is the only life there is? No, this is just, you know, if, if, a lot of people save up their money for retirement, and they save all their lives for retirement. And they're only going to be retired for 20, 30 years, you know? They're only going to be retired for a short time. Uh, as a Christian, you need to be saving up your entire life for heaven, for eternity. And how do you store up treasures in heaven for yourself? Jesus said store up treasures in heaven. How do you do that? Well, you go out and win souls for Christ, because the real treasures are the people's hearts that God is trying to win. That's, that's really why Jesus Christ didn't go to the cross to save the whales. He didn't go up there to save the environment. He went up there to save men's souls. And that's what he really cares about. And that's what we ought to really care about. <clears throat> now, in the month of December, in the month of December, we made a viral video that I'm sure you guys heard about on the news. We've talked about it in the last couple of shows because it was kind of like the big highlight at the end of the year. Although we, you know, we've been on the news, we've done things that have that have gotten attention from people all during the year. You know, we rebuked Dumas, Texas, because they had the Dumas Demons as their mascot, and that caused the whole city of Dumas to get in an uproar. And we made, you know, we made the news in Fort Wayne, Indiana, because we were preaching at the Gay Pride Festival and Gay Pride Parade there. And, and, and we were extremely aggressive with that. We followed them during the parade. We actually walked with them in the parade, preaching the gospel to everybody that was in that parade, and they had to hear it the entire time they were in this parade. And they were not happy about it. But you know what? Better they're upset with us trying to reach them for Christ than to come to us on the day of judgment and say, why didn't you preach to me? Why didn't you tell me the truth? You know, I don't want to hear anybody that's going their way to hell come up to me and say, why didn't you tell me the truth? Because I am telling them the truth. And there's, there's no excuse for them to say they haven't heard it, because they have. If they've been around me or they've been around our ministry. And so we made a, a viral video 
by going to a mall. I went to a mall in Amarillo, Texas, and made a, a short video, only about three minutes long. And um, basically, I told the children at the mall waiting to see Santa Claus that Jesus Christ was the reason for the season, that Santa Claus was not real. And I rebuked the parents for um, lying to their children. The uh, Bible says God hates a lying tongue. And it says in Proverbs thirteen five that a righteous man hates lying. So if you're going to be a righteous person in Christ, you should not lie to your children. And don't lie to them about the Easter bunny either, because I got plans on preaching something for Easter. I have plans for that. If the Lord helps them work out, well, then I'm going to, there's a chance we could be on the news again. I don't know. I'm just going to do what the Lord tells me to do at Easter. And people get upset. They get upset. If it makes the news, it makes the news. If it doesn't, if only five people hear about it, fine. It doesn't matter to me. I'm not in this for the publicity. I'm in it. You know, I'm, I'm not in it for the income. I'm in it for the outcome. And the outcome is that God is glorified and the gospel of Jesus Christ is preached to the lost. So they might hear and so this viral video here that we made in December went all over the world, uh, literally all over the world. It made the news in China. It made the news in Ireland. I was on a talk radio program for about an hour, an hour in Ireland. I got to preach the gospel to tens of thousands of Irish people without even getting on a plane. I got to, I got to be on live radio and do interviews in Orlando, Florida, San Diego, California, Chicago, Illinois, Lubbock, Texas, Perryton, Texas, Dallas, Texas, the largest talk radio show in the in the state of Texas is in Dallas, and I was on that radio program. And I got to preach the gospel to tens of thousands of more people in each one of those places that heard my voice talking about Santa Claus versus Jesus. And I was live on CNN. Uh, I interviewed with USA Today, Washington Post, or I've I've been on all kinds of all kinds of newspapers, all kinds of blogs, all kinds of internet sites and everything and the video's been up everywhere. It's been seen millions and millions of times. And and it was for the glory of God at Christmas. So that at Christmas time, it's supposed to be about Jesus. It's not supposed to be about Santa Claus. Santa Claus has nothing to do with the birth of Christ. Nothing to do with it. Just like the Easter bunny has nothing to do with the resurrection of Christ. And you're going to see us preaching at a, some event, probably find some church that's putting on an Easter bunny thing with an Easter egg hunt. And we'll be standing out there. And I may I may take an Easter bunny and nail it to a cross and put blood all over it and a crown of thorns on it and a sign that says, the Easter bunny did not die for your sins. Jesus Christ did. I may do that and stand out in front of some church somewhere or some other public event where they're having a big Easter egg hunt to remind Christians of what Easter is really all about, which is about the resurrection of Christ not about it's not about the easter bunny and a bunch of eggs that's all pagan stuff why would you why would you want to celebrate the truth by introducing pagan traditions into it why would you want to do that i don't understand why christians are involved in this nonsense they're compromising with the world it's time to stop compromising with the world and that's probably a lot of reason why a lot of christians do not evangelize is because they're too busy they're too busy being involved in the things that they'd have to preach against if um if they were truly serving god uh, you're going to preach against a lot of things in the world because you're going to preach against the things that lead people to hell. It's just like a doctor hates cancer. A doctor hates cancer because um, it kills the patient he loves. And God hates sin for the same reason, because it kills the people that he loves. And he doesn't want them to suffer his wrath and go to hell. And so we have to take that in consideration. We have to, uh, we have to dedicate ourselves to preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so this year in review is just to remind you of what we've been doing this year and what you should be doing this next year. What you should be doing this next year is reaching out to the lost. You need to be reaching out to your neighbors, your friends, your family, and just people that you run into everywhere you go. And that's really street preaching right there. It is. You don't have to stand out in front of bars. You don't have to go to preach at some gay pride parade in Fort Wayne, Indiana, or you don't have to preach Alaska gay pride. Although I would appreciate the help, I really would. If anybody wants to contact our ministry at lastfrontierevangelism at gmail.com, if you want to join us coming in June when they have the Alaska Gay Pride, and you want to come join us, preach the gospel out there, hey, you're welcome to go out on the streets with us. We'll have to test you out a little bit to make sure you're not going to, you know, do something dumb, like hit somebody or something crazy. So we'll have to take you out on the streets with us and kind of test you out and see what your temperament is because not everybody can handle that sort of thing. But if you're interested in that, believe me, get in contact with us, and we will we will help you out. We really will. 
and we want to help churches. We want to encourage churches to be more involved. The reason that your country is uh, going to pot in a handbasket, the reason it's going to hell in a handbasket is because of sin. It's because of sin. And I guarantee you Donald Trump's not going to save you. And Donald Trump is not going to stop the judgment of God from coming against America. He's not. He's not going to stop it. Oh, it might get delayed a little bit. I don't know. I don't know. A lot of people think that Donald Trump's giving us a reprieve. It, a polit- there is no political solution to spiritual problems. There are no political solutions to spiritual problems. And America has a spiritual problem. And the church is the answer. Jesus Christ is the answer. And we need to be taking that answer to everybody that we can reach. So whether you put out a viral video or not, whether you just go and put up a Facebook post about that gives glory to God, you need to be reaching out to somebody for Christ. Do it online. Do it on the streets. Do it outside your church. Feed the homeless. Preach to people. Reach them. You got to do it. We're running out of time, folks. We're running out of time. And Jesus Christ is coming back. Is he going to find you working or sitting around watching TV? This is Pastor Dave Grisham with Last Frontier Evangelism. We'll be back next week. Don't forget to tune in between 8 and 9 a.m. Sunday mornings. God bless you.